I'm Jonathan Nelson for the Texas Academy of Family Physicians, and this is your Capital Report. Now that we're well past the halfway point in the 81st Texas Legislature, several deadlines are fast approaching that will spell doom for many of the more than 7,000 bills filed. With few days left before the session ends on June 1st, just getting a bill heard before a committee becomes a major hurdle. Two of TAFP's most important initiatives cleared that hurdle on the last day of March. The first is House Bill 1342 by Representative Jose Menendez of San Antonio. The bill would require health plans to provide instant verification of coverage to physicians at the point of service. That would include what services are covered by the plan, the amount of the patient's copay and deductible, and what the patient's out-of-pocket cost will be for services provided. Bradley Reiner, who serves as a practice management consultant for TAFP, told the committee that the absence of this information makes it difficult for patients and physicians alike. One of the things that I think is critically important, um, speaking on, on a personal note, I actually have a uh, large deductible plan. It would really be nice when you go into a doctor's office to be able to know specifically what those out-of-pocket expenses are. It really allows the patient to make some informed decisions. With the advent of low-cost, high-deductible health plans in which the patient pays for much more of the cost for services, physicians need to know how much to collect from the patient before that patient leaves the office. But with many plans, physicians have to wait until they've filed a claim and received a response to know how much the patient owes, and collecting that payment weeks after services have been provided is a difficult proposition. Justin Bartos, a family physician in North Richland Hills, says his six-physician practice spends about $100,000 a year on salaries and benefits for employees who are solely dedicated to finding out how much they should collect from patients. I think anybody can see in what priority things get paid around the household, and I don't think the, the doctor's bill is on the, on the top necessarily. And so consequently, when, when we're relying so much of the revenue to be billed directly from the patient and we don't collect it up front, it is a very difficult process to get it later. Also on March 31st, the House Committee on Public Health took up House Bill 1876 by Representative Warren Chisholm of Pampa. That bill would address the state's primary care shortage with a new substantial loan repayment program. To build momentum behind the bill, TAFP and the Texas Association of Community Health Centers hosted a press conference on March 23rd that generated quite a bit of attention. For more on that, here's TAFP's Kate McCann. Reporters from several news outlets attended the press conference at the Capitol as Representative Chisholm joined physicians and representatives from community health centers in calling for the passage of House Bill 1876. TAFP member Dr. Dana Sprudy is the Associate Program Director for the Family Medicine Residency Program at University Medical Center Brackenridge and Austin Medical Education Programs. She stood beside a pile of empty white coats representing the 4,500 additional providers the state needs by 2015 to care for its growing underserved population. We've seen over the last 10 years a decrease in the number of medical students that are choosing primary care uh, and specifically family medicine. Um, many of these reasons that are given have to do with lifestyle and debt burden. Uh, the average debt for medical students coming out of, of uh, school is about $130,000. And so the choices have been to uh, go into residency programs that, that provide lifestyle and incomes that will help them relieve that burden. The bill would restructure and consolidate the state's health-related loan repayment programs and provide a new substantial investment in debt relief for primary care physicians, dentists, and other health professionals who agree to serve in communities of need. Modeled after the National Health Service Corps program, the new fund would provide up to $160,000 for four years of service. TAFP member Dr. Adrian Billings is currently completing a term of service in Alpine. He's the perfect example of how a meaningful loan repayment program can bring young physicians to areas of need. I took a federal scholarship the National Health Service Corps to go to medical school and that allowed me to graduate debt-free from medical school and it also is what allowed me to go back to my home area of Alpine, Texas around the Mexican border and to practice uh, without having to worry about repaying Got, we're paying loans for medical school. It also has allowed me to be able to serve the medically underserved, uh, Medicaid, Medicare, and the indigent population without having to worry about repaying uh, large scholarship loans. 
Representative Richard Pena Raymond of Laredo, the bill's co-author, believes it is imperative that the House act to pass this important legislation. We need more physicians, more dentists. We do need more medical help in the underserved areas of the state of Texas. Uh, I think that most who are watching this also know that um, oh, if we don't do more uh, to, to get more uh, medical personnel, if you will, into the underserved areas, I think we're going to fall further behind in, in providing quality health care in the state of Texas. This is a good way to, and a good step in the right direction. I hope this is something that uh, those who are watching could support and if they can, you know, let your legislators know House Bill 1876 is something that would be good for Texas. The House Public Health Committee has left the bill pending and time is running out. TAFP encourages you to contact your representatives and ask for their support on House Bill 1876. You can use the Speak Out tool on AAFP's website to find out who your representative is, get the phone number, and even send an email. Just go to www.aafp.org and click on Speak Out under Policy and Advocacy. For TAFP News, I'm Kate McCann. The Senate passed its version of the state budget last week by a 26 to 5 margin. The $182 billion plan includes $11 billion in federal stimulus funds, and it includes a small increase in Medicaid provider fees. The Senate budget does not include money to cover more families through the state children's health insurance program, and it also doesn't fund an extension to 12-month continuous coverage for children covered under the Medicaid program. The House Appropriations Committee is still working on its version of the budget. Also last week, the Senate Government Organization Committee passed the Sunset Bill for the Texas Department of Insurance. Physicians can expect more action on issues important to them when the bill makes it to the House. On the managed care front, the House Committee on Insurance took up House Bill 1932 by Representative Sempronia Thompson of Houston which would require health plans to develop a standardized label containing details of the plan so patients can easily compare one plan to another. TAFP supports this bill and will keep you up to date on its progress. Well, the Academy had a great meeting in Austin this March. If you missed the annual C. Frank Weber Lectureship and Interim Session, you missed out on a lot of fun. Find the link on TAFP's homepage and watch a quick video recapping the weekend and inviting you to attend our next meeting, TAFP's 60th Annual Session and Scientific Assembly, July 15th through 19th in Arlington. For more in-depth coverage of these and other issues important to the Family Physicians of Texas, check out the News Update block on TAFP's homepage, www.tafp.org. Thank you for watching TAFP's Capital Report. I'm Jonathan Nelson. We'll see you next time.